In order to prepare for the Biopack Respiratory Cycle Lab, you must first complete the Respiratory Cycle Pre-Lab outlined in the Bio 112 Must Know Lab Manual prior to the lab. The first step outlined in the Pre-Lab is to download the latest version of the free Biopack Student Lab software from the Biopack website. Step-by-step -step downloading instructions are listed on Respiratory Page 2 in your Must Know book. If you have any trouble following these steps or prefer a video demonstration with troubleshooting tips, watch the How to Download Biopack Application video tutorial showcasing these steps on the MC Anatomy Physiology YouTube channel. A link to this site can also be found in Canvas under the AMP2 Lab Resources section. If you do not have a computer, however, or are unable to download the application to your computer, the South Hall Upstairs Computer Lab has the free software already installed and can be used to complete the remainder of the pre-lab. If you haven't already downloaded the BSL application, you can pause this video here to complete the downloading steps before continuing. Once the download of the Biopack application is complete or you have access to a computer with it already installed, follow the instructions on Respiratory Page 3 in your Must Know book to complete the next bullet in the pre-lab. To open the Respiratory Cycle Lesson Introduction, open the BSL application, select Prepare for a Lesson at the top of the BSL window, L08 for Lesson 8 Respiratory Cycle 1 from the drop-down list, read Lesson Introduction at the bottom, and then click OK. A window will open with a PDF of the Respiratory Cycle Lesson Introduction. As outlined in your Must Know, you must read through this introduction as well as the Respiratory Cycle Lesson Prologue on page 4 and watch the remainder of this video in order to answer the Respiratory Cycle Pre-Lab questions correctly on pages 5 and 6 in your Must Know book. Once you've completed the Pre-Lab in full, you are then ready to conduct the Respiratory Cycle Lab. On the day of the Respiratory Cycle Lab, you will be placed in groups of three to four students. Each group will be provided the following, a Biopack MP36 unit, a recording laptop with power cable, a labeled Biopack equipment satchel, and a set of Respiratory Cycle Lab procedures printed and bound. Please note that these printed instructions must remain in the lab for other sections to use. A PDF version of these printed instructions can also be found in Canvas under the AMP2 Lab Resources section. Pages 2 through 12 of these instructions detail how to record the respiratory cycle for each test subject in your group, which is what you will be doing in the first half of the lab. Once all respiratory recordings for your group are complete, pages 13 through 24 then detail how to open your file on a separate computer to complete data analysis of your respiratory recording and answer the post-lab questions in your Must Know book. Keep in mind that you will only be responsible for analyzing your own respiratory recording. If you cannot record as a test subject for a medical or personal reason, speak with your professor before the lab. As stated in your instructions, position the Biopack MP36 unit and Biopack recording laptop at one end of the lab table near an outlet. Plug in the laptop power cable and turn the laptop on, hitting enter for the password when prompted. Open the Biopack satchel and remove the Biopack power cable from the back compartment. This cable is comprised of two parts. Ensure the cable is connected firmly at its adapter before plugging one end of the MP36 power cable to the outlet at the end of the lab table and the other end to the DC input on the back of the unit under the DC input label. Ensure that the unit power switch is down and the unit remains turned off while your group connects the remaining cables. You can confirm this by checking to make sure the green power light is not lit on the front panel under the power label. Now remove the wound USB cable from the USB compartment of the Biopack satchel. Note how this cable has two different connection ends. Plug in the flat USB end to any empty port on the laptop. Plug in the male type B connection end to the back of the MP36 unit under the USB label. Be sure to match the shape of the cable connection properly here. If this cable end is forced in and plugged in upside down, the laptop will not be able to connect with the Biopack unit. Now remove the folded and wound respiratory transducer from its labeled compartment in the Biopack satchel. Plug in the pronged connection end with the label facing up into channel 1 port on the front of the unit under the label CH1 for channel 1. Once plugged in, turn the side screws all the way down to secure the cable in place. Nothing should be plugged into the electro check port or channel ports 2 through 4 on the front of the unit. With all cables properly plugged in, now turn the power switch on the back of the Biopack unit on. The green power light should then light up on the front of the unit under the power label. If the power light does not come on, check the power cable connections at the DC input of the MP36 unit, the outlet, and the power adapter. If this doesn't correct the issue, ensure the outlet reset test button hasn't been accidentally pressed, or switch ports on the power outlet. 
Lastly, move a chair closer to the setup at the end of the lab table for the test subject to sit down. Following the instructions in the Printed Respiratory Cycle Lab Procedures Manual provided, prepare the test subject for reporting. If the subject is wearing a jacket or a bulky sweater or hoodie, ask that they remove it, as it may interfere with the reporting. The respiratory transducer must be wrapped around the subject's chest to measure expansion and contraction of the thoracic cavity during respiration. The respiratory transducer is fitted with two eyelets for a Velcro strap to feed through. Undo the Velcro strap on one side of the eyelet and wrap it around the subject's chest, below the armpits and above but not over the nipple line. Ask the subject to hold the transducer with the label facing out and wire running down over their sternum. Now feed the loose end of the respiratory strap back through the eyelet and ask the subject to breathe out completely as you pull the strap tight toward their back. The strap should fit snugly around the subject's chest. If it is loose, ask that they exhale again and pull and tighten it further. Press the Velcro end of the strap down over the material of the strap to secure it in place once it is tight enough. Pulling the strap will cause the transducer to shift slightly. Ask that the subject adjust the strap so that the transducer once again sits over their sternum. Ensure that the BioPack logo is facing out, the cable attaching it to the unit is running down, and the placement is above but not over the nipple line. Open the BioPack student lab application on the desktop of the recording laptop provided. If the BioPack registration website opens, immediately close it out and proceed to the application. Select Lesson 8, Respiratory Cycle 1 from the menu list and click OK. In the window that opens, type in the subject's first name as the file name and click OK. Please note, to protect the subject's privacy, if they do not want their name associated with their respiratory recording for any reason, you may type an alternate name of their choosing. Note that whatever is typed here is what the subject's respiratory lab file will be saved as at the end of their recording. You are now ready to begin calibration. Calibration requires an 8 second reading of the subject's normal breathing to ensure proper connection. This is not a recording, just a way to confirm everything is attached and running properly. Every subject in your group will be required to do this before their first recording. Read through all the calibration steps in the lab procedures manual before beginning. Ask that the subject remain seated and relaxed and that they do not speak or move while calibration is in progress. Click Calibrate at the top of the screen and then click Ignore when an error message appears regarding the temperature transducer, which is not being used. Calibration will then begin. Wait for it to stop automatically after 8 seconds. This is the only time the recording will stop automatically. You should see a relatively flat blue and red line appear on the screen during this time. If the recording resembles the example data in the lab instructions, click Continue. If you need to redo calibration for any reason, click Redo Calibration and review the troubleshooting checklist in the lab instructions before repeating steps 1 through 6 and redoing calibration. With calibration complete, you are now ready to record the first of four experiments in the respiratory cycle lab, the eupnea condition. Read all the eupnea recording steps in the printed lab procedures manual before beginning. Similar to calibration, ask that the subject remain seated, relaxed, and breathing normally. When ready, click record and immediately keep an eye on the running seconds bar on the bottom of the screen. You will want to record eupnea for 30 seconds. During the recording, if the respiration strip looks a bit flat, you can improve the amplitude of the waveforms on the screen by selecting display from the top menu and then auto scale waveforms. Just be sure not to accidentally click suspend too soon in the process. When 30 seconds has been recorded, click Suspend to pause the recording. Verify that the recording resembles the example data in the lab instructions. The top recording strip represents temperature, which is not being recorded and can be ignored. The bottom recording strip in blue represents respiration. The subject's blue respiration line should have a clear wave pattern. If the eupnea recording is unclear, even after selecting Display and Auto Scale Waveforms, Click Redo and repeat steps 1 through 7. If similar to the example, click Continue to proceed to the second experiment. Be sure to click Continue and not Done at this time. As is warned in the lab instructions, if you click Done before all four experiments have been recorded, you will have to exit the program and restart the lesson from the calibration stage. After clicking Continue, you will notice that the title of the previous recording still remains at the top of the screen 
while the bottom half of the screen showcases the name of the next experiment you are about to perform, which is the hyperventilation and recovery condition. Review all the recording steps with the subject before beginning the experiment so everyone knows what to do. Ask the subject to begin hyperventilating by breathing as quickly and deeply as possible through their mouth and nose, and immediately click record. Keep an eye on the seconds bar below the recording strip. This will begin where the previous euthmia recording is paused. After 30 seconds of hyperventilation, keep recording as you ask the subject to return to normal breathing. Keep an eye on the seconds bar and continue to record for an additional 30 seconds of their recovery. After a total of 60 seconds has been recorded, click suspend to pause the recording. If an error occurred during the recording, click redo and repeat steps 8 through 15. If the recording resembles the example data, however, and 30 seconds of hyperventilation followed by 30 seconds of normal breathing was recorded, click continue to proceed to the third experiment, the hypoventilation and recovery condition. Read through the hypoventilation and recovery recording steps in the printed respiratory cycle lab procedures manual with this subject before beginning. Ask the subject to hypoventilate by breathing in and out as slow and shallow as possible never taking a full deep inhale or exhale, and immediately click record. Keeping an eye on the seconds bar, once 30 seconds of hypoventilation has been recorded, tell the subject to return to normal breathing and continue recording their recovery for an additional 30 seconds. After a continuous 60 seconds has been recorded, click suspend to pause the recording. If any error occurred during the recording, click redo and repeat steps 16 through 23 in the printed instructions. If the recording resembles the example data and 30 seconds of hypoventilation followed by 30 seconds of recovery was properly recorded, click continue to proceed to the fourth and last experiment. The fourth and last respiratory cycle experiment is the cough and read aloud condition. Review the recording steps with the subject before beginning. Have reading material available for the second part of the recording. Know that there is no time frame for this recording, but it is recommended that the subject read a lengthy paragraph. Click record and then motion to the subject to perform one deep, loud cough into their sleeve or shirt. Immediately after their cough, continue recording as the subject begins to read aloud. They may read a section of the lesson prologue or any lengthy paragraph in their mess notebook. During the read aloud, each breath will appear as a spike as the subject inhales, followed by a gradual decline as they exhale during the reading. Once at least five of these read aloud breaths has been recorded, click suspend. If an error occurred during the recording, click redo and repeat steps 24 through 32 in your printed instructions. If the recording resembles the example data, click done as this is the last recording and you need to move on to saving the data. If you click continue, you may click done on the next screen. Follow the saving instructions in the printed respiratory cycle lab procedures manual provided carefully. This must be done after each subject in your group is recorded to ensure data is not lost. When you click done, a window will appear asking if you are sure you are done recording for this test subject. Click yes. A Biopack student lab window will then appear asking what you would like to do Select copy to another location from the menu and click OK. Please note that if you make any other selection at this time, the entire respiratory recording could be lost. After selecting copy to another location, designate a location to save the file to in the window that opens. If you have a flash drive, select it on the left of the window to view its contents and then click select folder. Do not type anything in the folder field. This file will be saved under the subject name that was typed in at the beginning of the recording. If you do not have a flash drive, select desktop on the left of the window and then click select folder. Again, do not type anything in the folder field. The file will be temporarily saved to the desktop and can be emailed to the subject once your group is done recording all test subjects. To visually confirm the file saved successfully, click the file explorer icon on the bottom of the screen and open either the flash drive or desktop. If you see the file name, then it has saved to the location selected. Do not attempt to open the file from here, however. It can only be opened via the BSL Data Analysis application. 
This step is just to make sure the file is saved before you record the next subject. Once the file is saved, the Biopack Student Lab window will again appear. Select Record from another subject from the menu and click OK. A window will appear asking that you type in a file name for the next subject. Flip back to the beginning of the printed Respiratory Cycle Lab Procedures Manual and repeat Subject Setup, Calibration, all four recording conditions, and then the saving steps for the next subject. You will repeat these steps for each subject recorded in your group. When your group is done recording all test subjects and each subject's respiratory file has been saved to either a USB drive or the desktop, you may then select Quit from the BSL window to close out the application. Any file saved to the desktop should now be visible. If, however, files are missing or you get to this point and realize you didn't save properly, there is a step in the saving segment of the instructions that details how to locate a backup file. In most cases, this step will work so long as the system hasn't been shut down. For those with files saved to the desktop, you may now open an email account and send yourself your ECG recording file. To save time, you may also send a blast email to everyone in your group with all files attached. Once the email is sent from the recording laptop, each member of the group must then get a laptop from the lab cart or use their own laptop to begin the data analysis phase of the lab. Before proceeding to the data analysis segment of the lab, if there is another lab occurring after yours, please leave all equipment attached and neatly arranged at the end of the lab table for the next group. If your class is the last to conduct the respiratory cycle lab for the day, follow the cleanup procedures listed in the lab instructions. This entails shutting down the MP36 unit and laptop, loosening the side screws and unplugging the respiratory transducer, refeeding the open end of the transducer strap through the empty eyelid, securing the Velcro end, and folding the strap neatly along with the cable wire before placing it in its labeled bin compartment. Unplugging all remaining cables and carefully winding and neatly returning them to their labeled bin compartments in the biopack satchel. Returning the biopack laptop with its power cable over it, as well as the biopack unit and satchel to the cabinet in the front of the room where your professor can secure it. And lastly, returning the respiratory cycle lab procedures manuals before leaving the lab. You can now proceed to the data analysis instructions in the printed respiratory cycle lab procedures manual provided. As previously mentioned, a PDF of these instructions is also available in Canvas under a 2 Lab Resources if you do not finish analysis in lab and need to complete it at home. All of the laptops in the lab cart have the BSL software installed and may be used to complete the post lab. It is recommended that you watch the Respiratory Cycle Data Analysis tutorial video on the MC Anatomy Physiology YouTube channel for step-by-step -step instructions on how to open your respiratory file and complete the Respiratory Cycle post lab in your MOS notebook. A link to the data analysis tutorial is available at the end of this video as well as in Canvas.